A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a new thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the new thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is new thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And today... Today, we're going to start by opening up the channel for other people to ask a question. And I've gotten some inquiries about that. This is the website, bethelight.com, b-the-light.com. Contact info is in there. And send me an email, or send us an email, with either a question that you wish Carol would bring up, or a particular prayer topic that you would like us to address, and we'll take it into the podcast, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) I can't even imagine the maybe, right? So the way you introduce that, they can't ask the question right now, right? Because we're not live. Right. Yeah, we're recording these in some number of weeks in advance. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. We'll get to the question. I can't even imagine the might part. You know, they ask the question, we'll put it out there. Yeah, well, back from my days doing zany morning radio shows, one of my colleagues used to, you know, they would pontificate about some topic for a while, sitting there in the studio, and in this case, they were in New York. And then eventually, after solving the world's problems, they say, but we don't necessarily know anything. We're just a couple of idiots with microphones. (laughs) 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 Pointing out that they had the radio show, so they could do whatever they want. So I put the maybe in there because... It's our podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Quick story. I was invited to teach at a conference and I was, you know, the audience can be a little snippy sometimes. And the host sent somebody in to kind of guard, run interference for me. And I said, yeah, I'm okay. Well, suppose they ask you something you don't know. I said, probably will. I don't know a whole lot, but (laughs) (laughs) go with it. I'm all right with that. Yeah. And being comfortable in the uneasiness is just like magic. It is. It's a magical place to be. Yeah. Yep. When somebody asks me a question and I don't know the answer, I have a special response that I always use, which is, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it you turns get, out that's an answer. But you know what? People get the strangest look on their face like, okay, nobody ever says, I don't know. Like they're expecting you to make up something. I'm not making up anything, but if you got a minute, I'll try to research it now. If not, I'll get back to you. Yeah. Yeah. So today you want to talk about oneness. Well, yes, I guess it's going to end up that way, but I want to talk about one mind, like there's one mind. And that is absolutely fascinating to me. You know, when I first encountered that some years ago, I'm like, one mind, get out of here. You know, I was really priding myself on having my own mind and being able to make my own decisions and think through things my own way. And you can, you can, and because your your own personal mind is your individualization or particularization of the one mind. So yeah. you do have your individual self and your awareness and the things that your senses are telling you and the thoughts that you're having, and those are all yours. They are unique to you and they're not isolated. Yeah, I get that. But I think in the understanding of spirituality, and I'm not sure what label to put on it because they try to avoid labels so much, but in understanding and trying to get in alignment with the flow of spirituality and connecting with spirit in a different way, understanding that my mind is, yes, the unique manifestation or the unique presentation of the one mind, you know, and I probably was very awkward in saying that, but it is one mind. And, you know, that's the nuance there. That is the central aspect to New Thought and all of the unity teachings. There is one. 
and it was brought about in really objecting to and pushing back against the Trinity. That there's a Father and a Son and a Holy Spirit and that there is something outside of us that's got its own little organizational thing going on. In this teaching, and I like to start with creation stories, and the reason that I do that is because when you take whatever your favorite creation story is, we can all trace ourselves back in our ancestry and our lineage to whatever was here when the universe began. Whether it's laws of physics or scripture, and anybody's scripture, they all basically go back to in the beginning there was God, and then God had a conscious intention, which is in mind, to create this universe with everything in it, including eventually us. And since all there was was the one, it created everything by sharing itself. The energy that's in the universe, the substance that's in the universe, the intelligence that's in the universe is that divine power sharing itself, letting itself be rearranged in different particles and places and pieces and awarenesses. So we can all trace ourselves back to that one. So understanding that in the beginning there was one mind there's still one mind. That mind is replicating and sharing and expressing itself, but it didn't separate itself out so that when your particular physical incarnation dies, everything that was about you goes away. Now we've learned to do that through writing and history and science and handing things down from one generation to the next. And the same thing has been going on for eternity. The things that are learned in mind, the understandings that are had in mind, continue to be operative. Even after the beings or creatures or people who have had those experiences or believe those beliefs go away. So we can all trace ourselves back to the one mind. And what we're doing is using that one mind in the creative process. That's what we do in prayer. And there's some nuance and subtlety to it. In the metaphysical teaching chart that we use in classes, it's a circle and it's got three levels on it. And it's a circle because it's showing that it's oneness. It's all God. It's all the one mind. But at the top of the circle is consciousness, intention and conscious awareness. That's the spiritual level. That's the consciousness level. That's where cause happens. God said, let there be light. And the level below that, is the law. It is the responder. It's the creative power in the universe that creates everything. And it is subject to consciousness. Consciousness says, let there be light. And the law responds and brings light into being. And that's the bottom section, which is where everything comes into form, where everything seems distinct and separate. That's where all of our senses are focused. So when we look at the world around us, it's easy to see that everything is separate and distinct. And, you know, because I'm over here and Carol's over there and the people who are listening to the podcast or wherever they are, and it is really easy to say in the physical world, these are the distinctions, these are the separations, these are the boundaries. I know where my body, where my expression of the one ends at my skin or somewhere just outside of that. If you believe in auras, it's well outside of that and energy fields and all the rest of that. We can demonstrate that we have influence on our environment beyond our body. But it makes it look like it's just our body because I can control everything inside of my body and outside of my body, I have to boss other people around <laughs> and try and force the issue somehow. But when it comes to mind, what I know, I have learned either because I know how I learned it and it was all in the world of form where things happen and I observed them and I came to an understanding about that. And the things that I am creating and the experiences that I am inviting can seem like they're happening in the world of form. But in fact, what we're doing is cause and effect doesn't happen in that bottom level in the world of form. The physicist will say the cause is you push on an object and the effect is that the object moves. And in metaphysics, what we understand is that the cause is deciding that you want the object to move. Let the object move. And that happens in consciousness and the law responds and the law might respond by me pushing on the thing 
but that's in the world of form. Knowing let there be movement, I'm now inspired to apply force in this direction. That's the first effect. And then the secondary effect is the thing moving. And that happens in everything that we're doing. Okay. So like, there was a lot there. Well, listen, you're deep, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I am so glad that I can keep up with you. But <laughs> that was pretty deep. But you're a deep guy. So, but sometimes I'm not so deep. So let's like maybe look at it from the practical perspective, like how it works in real life to me, mm -hmm. you know, how it has worked. So I do a lot. And having had the experiences, the work experience, life experiences over time that I've had, I have always felt like, and you know, I know you're going to call me this my control freak thing, but listen, <laughs> <laughs> it's been me thinking, at least I think it's been me thinking, okay? Mm -hmm. So how do I work this out? How do I work that out? Blah, blah, blah. And things move very quickly. And if it doesn't work, fine, scrap it, start again, da, da, da. That's how I lived. Mm -hmm. And it's had become comfortable, exhausting, but comfortable. And I think, you know, I'm not unique. I think that's how a lot of people do it. You know, you think you're, as you said, it's like, we think it's happening down on the, the lower level, the manifestation level, mm -hmm. where it's really happening somewhere else. Okay, so now what happens when I get in a situation or something I'm trying to create, or something that I'm trying to plan, or whatever, whatever. I've learned to look at it differently from there's one mind. And I'm accustomed to the way my personal mind thinks and works. I'm accustomed mm -hmm. to that. I don't have to think about it. However, you know, it's like if you keep doing the same thing, you get the same results. I got to a place where I was ridiculously tired of getting the same results and have to figure it out, you know, and they call that insanity or whatever. So I'm like, okay, wait a minute, what's this one mind thing? Well, let me kind of step outside of mind. This is not duality, okay? This is just mm. the way okay. I am expressing it. Step outside of my mind, my little piece of the big mind, and see, you know, what's out there. Like, everything is already known by God. There isn't anything that is known that God doesn't know or is unavailable to the knowledge of God because God knows everything, God. All That's right. Him. Got you there. So then I'll say, in this little corner of my piece of God mind, if I could use that term, it's not working. Like, let me go <laughs> into the big part, <laughs> like, <laughs> into the deep end of the pool. I know this sounds crazy, but this is how I made it work for me in my understanding. Let me dump into the deeper end of the pool, into the big God mind, and search and ask and wait for an alternative idea or way to think about something. And it happens every time. I mean, it works right. every time. Mm-hmm until it's become not just, I don't know if I'm going to say ne second nature, but such an amazing pleasure to do that, that when I, I'll say, you know, okay, is this you, Carol? This is probably like too small. Like go jump into the big part of the ocean, you know, and see what else is out there because. Yeah. Opening yeah. yourself up to a bigger possibility. Yeah. Yeah. And I love poetry and I love words. But with new thought, sometimes I like to take it slow and say, what exactly do those words mean? How do they play out in the everyday part of my life? Mm -hmm. You know, and that one mind piece of it. Like even, okay, so people laugh at me when I say this, but you know, I am 68. And so I have senior moments. And it's like, you know, you're going to have them. Okay, fine. I, put stuff in place to try to help me out with them. You know, it's not too bad. But then there are times when I kind of joke with myself and say, well, you know, there's one mind. So whatever I have forgotten in my little space, it's not gone. Like it's in the one mind. So I got to go wait and go get it. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, like the Christ mind. I never read anything in scripture where Jesus forgot anything. So I said, okay, right. I got this Christ mind. 
I may. Yeah. yeah, I got it. So go get it. Don't get all freaked out about it. You forgot it and then it'll come back. Yeah, two observations does. that I have there. The first okay. off is I completely agree with you that whatever it is that you are looking to access is available in the one mind and you can get to it. This is how when we can't find our car keys, instead of looking everywhere, we can get quiet and go within and ask the infinite to suggest the perfect place to look, in which case we only have to look one place because we go, oh, let me go look in the side room where I came in. And there's no reason that the, my keys should be there, except I happen to be doing a thing. And that sort of thing happens all the time. So being able to go through that process of opening to the infinite mind can respond for us immediately. It can give us intuition. It can give us guidance. You yourself like talking to spirit, inviting spirit to give you something directly. That's the process of opening to the one mind. And regarding senior moments, according to the scripture, Jesus was 33, so he didn't make it to senior moments. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. That helps. <laughs> okay. Story might have changed differently. Let's take a break and continue. Get inspiration in an instant. God calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of God's love is shining right now as you. It's your God call with Reverend Bill. Start your two-week free trial today and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Reverend Bill with an uplifting half-minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just $5.95 a month. The details are at godcall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni, and we've been having a great discussion about the one mind. The one mind, and describing the metaphysical teaching symbol, which is a circle with three sections in it, an upper section of consciousness, the middle section of basically the creative law that responds to consciousness, and the bottom section is form. And there's actually a thing that looks like a V. It's actually that they're connected. Spirit descends through law into form. It's active and it's creating stuff. And the things that happen in the world of form actually inform our individual consciousness. And all of this happens on the infinite level, the God level, and it happens on our personal level as well. So up in that top section, there's God consciousness. And then there's me and my consciousness. So I am able to set an intention. Let there be podcast and there is podcast. And it's activating the law and making that happen. And it's easy to see where we're distinct there because you have the consciousness that you're aware of and I have the consciousness of mine that I'm aware of. And that one infinite consciousness is both of us and everyone else and all the other consciousness that exists everywhere in the universe. So we're just not aware of our connection with it. The fun part is that the active, the creative part of the, the law that's responding, and it's a subjective law. It's subject to whatever is in consciousness. And it's sometimes called subconscious mind. There's conscious mind and subconscious mind. The interesting thing about your subconscious mind is that you're not conscious of it. So the notion is that there's only one subconscious mind. And when I put an intention into the infinite mind, and I put it into that, basically, the subjective law, it's the same as you doing it. My subconscious and your subconscious are only, they're undifferentiated. Because we're not aware of them. Yeah. And that's what's creating changes in our experience of life. That's why we can do healing prayer for other people. That's how we can invite circumstances that involve entire groups of people. 
And that's also how we can continue living out beliefs that people have had way long in the past. When there is a belief that's planted in that subconscious mind, it remains active until another belief comes and takes it away or replaces it. You know what? This is like something that you just can't talk about in one podcast. This is almost like a lifetime study, really, because there's so many examples that we can point to. So, for example, this is really a simple one, right? Is mm -hmm. that how I found you? Absolutely. There is no question. Because we've talked about the series of coincidences that led us together. Because you never respond to Facebook ads, and I never post Facebook ads. And there was one class that had a Facebook ad. And bada bing, it worked. Okay, so as unlikely as that was going to be, you were inspired to look, I was inspired to share, and the channel was open. And interestingly, if the Facebook ad thing hadn't worked, Spirit would have done it a different way. And you know what I want to add to that, really for the benefit of those listening, because you talked about we all have consciousness, you know, it's all out there. Mm -hmm. And it's important to say that I asked Spirit for a teacher. So that was my consciousness out there, right? Putting mm -hmm. it out there, right? And here the teacher came. And so I am so tickled by that story, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I am really so tickled because you and I have talked about little details in that story. But I said, Spirit, okay, so this must be the one you had in the neighborhood, right? This is the mind, the personality, the manifestation of what I need right there. Like, this is, you know, right here. Okay. And that was it. You know, it's like you showed up and I looked at the whole thing from a different perspective. I had a corporate life. And in my corporate life, you know, in that world, everything is resume. You know, you want a resume and it's got to be detailed and you're checking it out and da 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 da. da. And like, I didn't have, feel a whole big need to deeply check you out. <laughs> <laughs> because, no surveillance required. Yeah, because your appearance was so amazing. You used the word coincidence. Yeah, maybe. I guess that's okay. But it was just so, um, and so completely unlikely. I said, this has got to be you, Spirit. You know, so like, I'm not doing a whole lot of checking here. And then I got you on the phone. Well, Spirit knows how important a phone call is to me. I hate phone trees. Ugh. Could you tell by the energy I put out there? Yeah. They don't. 90% yeah. of the time, it don't work. But anyway, you know, I called you and you answered the phone. I almost couldn't talk. Yeah. What's up with that? Yeah. Yeah. And so I, was, I said, this is spirit all the way around, not only answering immediately, but the person actually is a human being, no phone tree. And here's the class, exactly what I need. So there's no way that the one mind thing is confusing to me. It's not. It is Unless completely possible that spirit had taken a few passes previously at putting us together because we were both in Philadelphia in the early 80s. And we both, at some point, were in the Philadelphia area working for Digital Equipment Corporation or as a partner with Digital Equipment Corporation. And there was every possibility that we could have crossed paths then. And it wasn't ready to happen. So we might have passed each other in the Cherry Hill Mall on numerous occasions. I don't know. I don't know. And when the time was right, the connection happened. So Spirit will call again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why I'm just so committed or it's so comfortable for me to say I ask spirit or I talk to spirit or whatever. It's not like the prayer idea that I used to know because I always had my own style of getting through. But I mean, it's that real, you know, so much so that now I just put it out there and wait. So my saying putting it out there is you saying from consciousness, it went into the law and the law started responding. Yes? Yeah. Yes. And as far as I'm concerned, all of the effective prayers that have been done by anybody in any religion at any time, what they're all doing is activating a new belief. They're creating a new belief. When the person who is doing the prayer believes that the change or the experience or the circumstance that they're looking for is possible, 
that's what gets put into the subconscious. That's what gets put into the subjective law. Because that law is always saying yes. So if I believe that God might do something nice for me, putting the word might and putting a belief in God outside of me into it are caveats. It's like, and God might not. God may decide not to. So it is my belief. As strongly as I can believe that it's going to happen, that's what's activating the law. And when we're aware that it's one mind and that we're using that same creative power that the infinite uses to create everything, and we're using it to create our particular experience, it becomes transformational. It also gives us a lot of accountability for what's going on. I am about to jump off the chair. I'm so excited. You know, just... <laughs> <laughs> see, the, I just love it, right? Especially when we hit upon something that's like really a home run. And you said, believe that it's possible. And that exact phrase was going through my mind a nanosecond before you said it. You know, it's like believing awesome. that it's possible. And I just think like, is this possible? Can I believe? Listen, this is what I need. I think I'm pretty much on autopilot now. But, and then sometimes like, is it possible? Yes, because there's nothing that is not possible for spirit to do. And then you come along and say, the answer is always yes. I said, yeah. okay, yeah. So if what I'm asking for is a little funky, I figure spirit can fix it up a little bit and give it to me better. There you go. And if we want it to rain and we believe that doing a rain dance adequately is going to get that result that we want, effective prayer is the one that creates the experience that we're looking for. If I believe that the rain dance is going to do it, and I get a bunch of other people who believe the same thing. And then we get together and we do a rain dance and we believe that this rain dance was effective, then it's probably going to rain. And if instead we're going to do a chant or for some reason decide that sacrifice is going to be important, it is the belief that that is going to cause the change that causes the change. P.S. This is not Reverend Bill inviting you to go out and sacrifice something or someone. <laughs> <laughs> Unnecessary, not helpful. Yes, the belief thing is the key. It's the magic. It is. And we talked a little bit about uh, subconscious and things that are in your subconscious that holds it back. And, you know, around that belief, we start to have to worry about, well, is this possible? And we start thinking about the logistics of it. And then next thing you know, the belief is gone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the other powerful thing that you can say when somebody asks you a question is, God knows how this is going to work. God knows how this could possibly happen. And that's not giving up. That's letting go. Dif big difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because with one of them, we keep the belief that it's possible. That it's going to happen. And when we give up, we let loose. the. We say, we, no, I don't believe it. Forget it. It's not going to happen. And then, of course, what happens is that belief is active and it doesn't happen because we believe it's not going to happen. Or in the case of a recovering control freak... You know, you believe it can happen if you do this, 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 and this, and you got like all the pieces put in place. And that is not letting go. You know, for me, mm -hmm. letting go is saying, okay, God, listen. And I used to say this. I said, listen, this is the way I see it. Now, you're free to change it any way you want. But in case you're busy, I already got this worked out. <laughs> <laughs> there's the notion of struggle. Like if there's something that we want to have happen and... We understand that it's going to be a lot of work and we take it on and it becomes daunting and we wind up struggling with it. We are completely free to do that. We are able to do that. And it's also possible for us to say, I want to have the same experience and the struggle is not required. And then all sorts of stuff comes along. Maybe there is a new technique or a new device that we get introduced to that makes whatever it is that we wanted to accomplish really easy. Or other people show up and say, can I help you with that? Because that really looks like fun. Or, or whatever. The struggle and the activity are not necessarily connected, unless we believe they are. And you know what, the activity, even still though, you know, the activity, I won't say will make it not happen, but it can considerably slow it down mm -hmm. a lot and kind of mess it up. Oh yeah, well, it goes at, at human speed rather than at God's speed. Yeah, I used to complain that God is like slow, you know, slow moving. But then I realized that <laughs> slow moving because usually I was in there trying to work it out, <laughs> fix it. Well, yeah, because you're in a hurry. 
Yeah, I'm in a hurry. But, you know, I'm really slowing down the process because since I don't know how everything works like I thought I did. Yeah. So it's kind of a welcome space to be in to say, listen, you got this, God, I'll just wait. Yep. And I would guess that there are ample stories that you have of things where you thought, well, I can muscle this, but I'm just going to partner with God on this one. And it happens so much faster than you were expecting. And it probably would have if you had to go through your checklist. So much faster and so much nicer. And the nicer part is that I am not so completely worn out and and frustrated. (laughs) And, you know, it's another story down the road, but Yeah. And I got so used to the stress of it because that's how it goes. You know, you work, you're tired, you work, you're tired. But then it kind of hit me like, seems as though I shouldn't have to do this. You know, I think God has the ability to handle it. Yeah. God created the entire universe and from all reports didn't get tired. And didn't consult me one time about any of it. So good point. Good point. This is an off the shelf universe. (laughs) (laughs) that you get to accept the way it's delivered. I want to mention one other thing. We have been talking about this topic in every podcast episode we've done. We haven't done it specifically talking about the one mind, but that is so central and so core to the teaching and the philosophy that we're just coming at it from all kinds of different directions. Yeah. When you first said that, I thought, uh, have we really? You know, I didn't... But this, the way we zeroed in on it this time was just really, really what I was trying to get at so important. Perfect. Let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll do a practical prayer about being one with the one mind. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. Amazing conversation today. Yeah, on the one mind. And we're going to do a prayer, not on the one mind, but just to deepen into the awareness that that one mind is my mind, that that one mind is the mind of everyone who's listening to this. And everything that is known in the one mind is available to everyone. And it happens through guidance, it happens through intuition, and it's inspiration. Sometimes we know things and we know why we know them. They're a result of experience. And other times we know things, but we don't know why we know them. And sometimes it's things that, as far as we're concerned, have just always been. So I don't know why that is, but it just is. And that's an idea or knowledge in the infinite mind that's replicating itself. And sometimes that's the consciousness of the planet, the consciousness of the race or the universe, because everything that has ever been thought, everything that has ever been believed continues to exist in that subjective mind. And it can be dictating our lives. And then something comes along that changes our mind that lets us understand something different. Used to be, Birds could fly and humans couldn't. And then some people understood the laws of aerodynamics a little more fully and deeply and were able to devise an airplane. And now people can fly. And we don't have to turn ourselves into birds. We don't have to play by the rules that the birds use because they do it by flapping wings and we do it with engines. 
but the principle is the same. And by understanding the principle and having enough understanding of mechanical science and material science to be able to build an airframe and an engine that will drive the airframe, suddenly we're able to do something that previously had been impossible. It was always possible. We just didn't know how to do it. It was always available in the one mind. I mean, the infinite knew how to make birds. The infinite understands flight really well. <laughs> we just didn't give it to us to begin with. We had to adapt and adopt and take it for ourselves. So this prayer is about being aware of our connection to the one mind. So I invite you as you're listening to turn away from the world around you to whatever extent is safe and possible. Maybe it's closing your eyes. Maybe it's going to a soft focus. If you're driving a car, then probably that's not going to be in your best interest. So open yourself in whatever way you can to that divine power and presence, that infinite mind that exists everywhere. And if you believe in it and you have experience with it, then just open your awareness to that. And if you don't, open yourself to the possibility, the possibility that there is one power and presence, one infinite intelligence. In the beginning, it was darkness and void in God. And that one mind is the mind of God. Or if we go through the lessons of physics, perhaps it's in the Big Bang. Everything came from the Big Bang. Everything came from the singularity. And all of the intelligence, all of the knowledge, all of the wisdom, whatever mind exists in the universe now, came from that as well. It couldn't have come from anywhere else. So that one continuing to unfold and reveal and share itself as its creation, that one mind is the mind of everyone and everything. It is that consciousness that exists through me and each person who's listening to this prayer. There is one mind. That mind is my mind now. That mind is each of ours now. And all of the wisdom, all of the insight, all of the knowledge that exists anywhere is available everywhere because it's one mind. So I now invite each of us to open our awareness of the connection that we have with that one mind. It's not like a pipeline that connects my mind to a bigger mind. It is a drop of water in a huge ocean. And if it's hard to individualize what a drop looks like in the ocean, imagining the rain falling into the ocean. Raindrops each individualized, but the same substance, the same content as the ocean. And once they get into the ocean, they can't be differentiated. There is one mind. That mind is my mind. That mind is our mind now. And everything that is available in that mind is available to each of us to understand and to use in ways that bring more and more of what we consider good into our lives. That one mind is responding to our conscious intention and creating newness in our lives. So wisdom and insight is available. Guidance is available. And the creative process is active. So as we gain clarity on exactly that which is desirable for our experience next, we set that intention loose in that creative mind, the law, and allow it to create and find transformation in our lives and the lives of the people who are around us. This is the good that's going on now. It's happening now for each of us individually, for all of us together. We are each deepening into our awareness of the connection with the one that indwelling presence, that divine intelligence, and using it even more fully and richly and deeply to create the life of our dreams. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for the good. I'm grateful for the awareness. And I'm grateful to be able to speak this word and release it into that creative law and know that it's so. And so it is. Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of Be The Light.com. Be the Light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. 
You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org.